Hello and welcome back to another clinical skills video. Uh, my name is Dr James Gill and I'm a GP and a clinical lecturer at Warwick Medical School. And yet again, I'm sure you're seeing the pattern now, we've been visited by the Limbs and Things Fairy who's provided us with another two boxes. So far we've done a rectal examination is performed and also how we go about examining the male genitals. So they're two very sensitive topics that it's important that medical students and clinicians are very comfortable in performing. But as a lot of information has come back from uh, the wider community as well, these videos have helped yourselves as patients understand uh, what they're likely to go through when they have one of those intimate examinations performed. So today you've joined us back in uh, one of the uh, rooms at the practice um, and we're going to go on to the female uh, pelvis or the female genital examination. Now that is a particularly um, important examination and you could argue is a much more common examination than the male genital examination. A chap can easily go until his 40s and 50s without ever needing to visit the doctor for a genital examination. Whereas in the UK, hopefully, all women over the age of 25 will be invited for their cervical smear, so will have to experience a pelvic examination. The pelvic examination for ladies is exceptionally important at effectively testing in order to try and prevent um, the development of cervical cancer and address any um, suspicious cells as soon as they are seen. I can't underline this enough. The cervical screen is an exceptionally important examination for anybody who has a cervix. That's because this is a screening test designed to reduce the incidence of disease. So what I mean by that is that we are testing all um, ladies and we are going to be looking for abnormal cells for a disease that we understand and as and when those abnormal cells are found we can intervene early meaning that we have a positive outcome compared to people who are not screened. And this is very important, the understanding of what constitutes a screening test, which is why we don't have a screening test for prostate cancer. With prostate cancer, we don't have a screening test because there is no reliable test to pick up prostate cancer. That test can't be applied to all individuals and it would not necessarily mean that we would intervene early in the course of that disease because of the natural history of prostate cancer. So, with that in mind, we're going to have a look today at Limbs and Things female pelvis. We're going to go through some speculum examinations and we're also going to have a look at what abnormalities we might find on the female pelvis. Right, let's get unboxed. So today, Limbs and Things have provided us with seven different um, female examination models. We have a large fibroid, a small fibroid, an ovarian cyst, a retroverted uterus, a uterus which is 10 to 12 weeks pregnant, and one that is 14 to 16 weeks pregnant, along with a normal um, vaginal and cervical module as well. As a result, we can see that there are no obvious abnormalities to the external uh, genitalia on these models. Thus, we're just going to discuss over some of the features that we may encounter when dealing with the external genitalia on the female pelvis. So before we start, um, Let's review the anatomy and then discuss some of the features that we may find on the external genital examination of the female pelvis. Starting at the top, we have the mons pubis, formed by the symphysis pubis and the fat pad. 
Moving downwards, we have uh, the labia majora on the outside and the labia minora towards the inner aspect. At the top, we will have the uh, clitoris underneath the prepuce or hood, and beneath that, we'll have the external urethral orifice, sometimes described as the meatus. And finally, beneath, we will also have the anus. And we also want to check the area between the vagina and the anus, the perineum, to see if there's been any signs of trauma during childbirth or an episiotomy. When it comes to the male genital examination, nothing more complicated than a pair of rubber gloves is required. Similarly, we've got a very simple examination with the rectal examination, needing just some gloves and some lubricating gel. When it comes to the female pelvis, however, we need to use some specialist kit, that being the speculum. So the speculum is inserted into the vagina and then opened, allowing us to observe uh, the cervix over here. Uh, we can also pass items down through the speculum, such as cervical smears or um, swabs, in order to sample the cervix, the end of the vagina, uh, and anything else which may be present there. The metal speculum, um, I'm informed, um, is not particularly pleasant when taken out of the packet because these are cold. As a result, if you do find that you need to use a metal speculum, run it under the warm tap for a few moments beforehand in order to bring it up in terms of body temperature so it's less uncomfortable for uh, the person being examined. In terms of uh, metal speculums, they've largely been replaced in the UK with plastic speculums, which we'll come to in a moment. There are multiple sizes of speculum available, from small, medium to long. Uh, in most cases, we're actually going to be using the medium uh, speculum. However, in women who um, have been pregnant, we may need the longer speculum. Similarly, we can try to put a, a pillow underneath the lower back if the patient has a cervix that is very posterior and we're having difficulty with the examination. All of the plastic speculum are single use and will be disposed afterwards. When it comes to using the speculum, we're advised to take the speculum out of the packet and provide a small amount of aqua gel along the tips of the blade. However, personally, I found that doesn't provide a great coverage and also a rather unpleasant noise. Thus, it's better to put the aqua gel into the bag and then apply the aqua gel from the bag within around the speculum. That way, you will achieve a nice, even coating and hopefully mean that the speculum will pass without any discomfort. In terms of preparing for our um, female pelvic examination, we have obviously pre-lubricated our speculum. We'd want to be applying a roll to the bed, but we're also going to take a proportion of that roll to use to cover the lady's modesty um, during the examination where possible. And we also need to ensure that we have a focus lamp that we will be able to use to angle during the examination. So, whilst we um, get the equipment ready for the examination, the lady takes off her bottom clothing and uh, positions herself on the bed on her back, at which point she'll tell us she is ready for the examination to commence, and we will either come around the curtain or in from the other room. It's vital that we've addressed the need for a chaperone, both for the lady and for ourselves, and we'd expect them to enter the room with us at that point. With the lady on the couch, we provide the blue roll as a covering for um, the lady. And at this point, we go to examine the external genitalia with the um, lamp in place. Here, we're looking for any evidence of um, cysts. We're looking for any changes to the skin, any obvious swellings, discharge, or potentially for anything coming out of the vagina such as a prolapse. 
For the biomanual examination, lubrication is required to the uh, index fingers. And we've explained again to the patient what we're going to do, that we're going to press down on the lower abdomen, and we're going to place the index and middle finger into the vagina in order to um, see if we can press onto the um, cervix and if we, need, if we can examine the um, organs internally. So we're just going to apply with a bit of pressure in and we can feel the cervix and then we need to press up to see if there's any excitation. And we want to feel the lateral and uh, posterior fornixes and press over the umbilicus to see if there's any pain here. So we're going to put the fingers in the lateral fornix. We're going to press laterally to the umbilicus and then move over and press laterally to the other side and seeing if we can find any masses in the pelvis here that we can press against the fingers with. And gently, we'll remove the fingers and inspect for any discharge or blood. We would then take our speculum and approach the lady using our left hand and gently open the labia majora. Whilst doing so, insert the speculum with the blades vertically and as you insert, rotate around. Once within, you can open the speculum in order to observe down for the cervix. So by comparison here, we have a nullip, so a lady who hasn't given birth, and we can see that there is a cervical ectropion here, the redness around the os or opening of the cervix. This is likely to be a cause of intermenstrual bleeding and postcoital bleeding. Here, again, we have another nulliparous cervix, so a very small os, and again, redness by the os. However, in this case, this redness is due to a cervical polyp, which is why the bimanual examination must be performed as well as the speculum examination. As here, it will be quite easy for the polyp to be misconstrued as a cervical ectropion, but on examination, an ectropion would feel normal on bimanual examination, whereas here, we'll feel a defined lump presenting from within the cervix. Here we have a retroverted cervix, suggesting that there is a change in position of the cervix within the lie of the pelvis. This is a normal anatomical variation, but can mean it's slightly more difficult to get the speculum around the cervix in order to visualise it. Here we have a cervix of a pregnant lady at 10 to 12 weeks. We can see there is a distinct contrast at 10 to 12 weeks between the next module at 10 to 14 weeks. Crucially here, as a difference between the two, the cervix is now pointed more downward and we can see there has been a change to the cervical os due to the increasing size of the fetus. If swabs are required, then we can move the dial in order to keep the blades open, allowing swabs to be taken. A charcoal swab. Go in, around the cervix, and make sure we're getting over the office itself. Any discharge. Place that in the swab, and then send that off to the lab. We then release the lock, and slowly withdraw the speculum. The speculum would then be deposited in the bin, and we allow the lady to um, clean herself whilst we exit the room. Well, there we go. That's the completion of the pelvic examination using both the bimanual approach and a speculum. I hope this has been um, a useful video for you. Um, so I think to recap on this, it's very, very important that like our rectal, like the genital examinations generally, the patient knows at each step what it is that you're doing and you have a good dialogue with the patient. Even if you've never had an examination such as this before, 
just try to picture what this would be like as the patient receiving this examination, not knowing what is going on. Even if you're a tremendous clinician, you start off, you do your examination, you do the work, you do what is needed to do, and then tell the patient afterwards what you have or have not found. There's quite a lot of dead space in that examination room, and I thoroughly uh, suggest that you give a commentary to the patient about what's going on. The worst thing the patient's going to do is ask you to shut up, which to be honest, isn't going to happen because you are giving the patient information about what's going on. And personally, I actually find it very useful for my own thoughts to have those outside. So, okay, we're putting the speculum in now. I'm having a look. We're going down the vagina. I can't see any obvious uh, problems here. There's no clear uh, discharge. And I can't see any abnormal uh, lumps or bumps. Okay, so trying to find the cervix, we're having a little bit of a difficulty finding the cervix, and there it is. That might feel a little bit uncomfortable for you, but I can see everything that I need to. The cervix looks nice and healthy, but we're going to do a swab. So you're going to pause. I'm going to pause this here for a second. Again, it might be uncomfortable just once I get the swab ready. We've taken the swab, and now I'm going to remove the speculum, and afterwards we're going to go and do the biomanual. So if you're happy to proceed. Excellent. I'm going to put two fingers in and I'm just going to feel around. I'm checking both sides of the cervix. And now I'm going to have to press down with a bit of force on your tummy. Again, that might feel unpleasant, but it's letting me know that there's no problems around in there. You'll find your own patter for um, doing an examination such as this. And part of that will be based upon how you're performing the examination yourself but also on the feedback that you get with patients as you do it. I hope this has been useful. Um, please put any questions and uh, comments you've got down below um, and we'll try and get back to you. In terms of the limbs and things videos, we've still got an enhanced abdominal examination video to perform and also a breast examination using uh, the different skin tones. So if you'd be um, wanting to see what those are, please click the subscribe button and give the video a like and uh, we'll join you for the next one. Take care.